What's up YouTube, this is Detroit Borg, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of iMovie for iPad 2. Now this app is compatible with the iPhone 4, iPod Touch 4th generation, and iPad 2. And it's universal, so if you buy it once for any of those devices, you can uh, download it for free for all of the others. You don't have to pay uh, for a separate iPad app. So let's go ahead and launch iMovie. Now when you bring up iMovie, you get a marquee display complete with the sound effects of the marquee lighting up. And here we have a movie poster of the project I've created earlier. We're going to actually attach it to the end of this video. Uh, but up here you can uh, edit your title. So I just labeled it iMovie Demo. You can exit out and type it back in again. You can get uh, word completion. You also see the date the project was created and the duration. Now to create a new project, just click the plus sign, and you're given your movie editor. The iMovie layout is very straightforward, with the media in the left corner, a preview of what you're doing in the right, and just below the timeline, which is where you'll do all your editing. In the media window, you have three media options to cycle through, video, photos, and music. This is all of the content stored on the iPad, such as videos and photos shot with the iPad or the media synced to your iPad via iTunes. You can also import videos and photos with the camera connection kit, but iMovie does not support all media files, so some imported media may not appear, such as clips I've imported from my Flip Minnow HD. You can also record new content directly in iMovie by tapping the camera icon. Here you can record video or shoot photos. But before we start adding content, let's take a look at our theme. A theme is essentially a template which contains the title block designs, the transition styles, and the soundtrack. To select or edit your theme, tap the gear icon. From here you have up to eight different styles. You can change your theme at any time during the project so you are free to experiment with the themes you like. You can also configure different elements such as turning off the soundtrack or selecting the transition style. For this project, we'll select modern. Now back to our media window, we can see that our video clips are displayed in a timeline view, and you can scroll through them to find the clip you want. In this case, I have numerous video clips of my new car. If I select a clip, a blue arrow appears, which means I can tap it to add it to my timeline. I can also select a portion of the clip by dragging the yellow trim head. You can see where you are trimming in the preview screen to the right. Now you can tap the blue arrow to add just that segment from the timeline. You'll now notice that a yellow in-use indicator now appears just below that segment indicating what you have borrowed from that clip. With clips in my timeline, I can now see a preview of my project by tapping play, or I can scrub the timeline just by swiping left and right. Now let's do some editing. With multi-touch, I can pinch out to expand the clips for more precise editing, or pinch in to shorten them for a broader view. To shorten a clip, tap the clip and drag the trim heads at each end of the clip. You can see where you are editing in the preview window above. To split a clip, just swipe down at the point you want to make the cut. You can also do this as many times as you need. To delete the clip, just double tap on the segment and choose delete. Or drag the clip out of the timeline. It will disappear in a puff of smoke. You can also rearrange clips by holding and dragging them to other parts of your timeline. By default, iMovie adds the dissolve transition between each clip. Tapping on the transition allows you to edit them. We have very few transition choices here, but one of them is theme, which is referring to the template we are using for this project. You can lengthen or shorten the duration of the transition as well. We also have a precision editor, which allows for more precise control over the transitions between clips. To invoke the editor, just pinch vertically or tap the double arrow icon just below the transition icon. Once you are finished editing, just pinch to hide the editor or tap the icon. We can also insert photos into our timeline. When adding photos, iMovie applies the Ken Burns effect. iMovie gives you tools to edit how this feature is applied by allowing you to specify the start and end points of the effect. The latest version of iMovie also gives us much better audio controls. If we tap the waveform icon, we can visualize the audio in each track. You can also use the iPad's internal microphone to record your own audio. Just tap the microphone icon and begin recording.
Hey YouTube, this is Detroit Borg with a look at my 2011 Lincoln MKX. Accepting the audio will add it to our timeline. Now we can trim it, drag it around, change the volume, or delete. We can also activate the theme's soundtrack by going back to our settings and turning background music on. You can also select your own music from your library, choose the theme music from one of the other templates, or add a sound effect. Just select the music icon under your media window. Now let's listen to some of the themes. To select your own music, you can navigate by artist, album, playlist, etc. You also have dozens of sound effects to choose from. Some of them you may recognize as ringtones from the iPhone. And just like your audio recording, you can delete, trim, reposition, or change the volume just by double tapping. You also have some editing options with your soundtrack. You can tap the header on the soundtrack to activate the trimmer. Keep in mind you can only edit the soundtrack if it's shorter than the length of your project. If you remember under settings, you can loop the background music if you want it to fill the length of the film, or you can add another song. The added song will continue where you left off with the previous soundtrack. You can't reposition or change the start point. Finally, let's add some titles. To do so, just double tap a clip. Now you can select a title style, opening, middle, or end. Opening includes a title and location, middle and end just gives you text. Once you are done adding your text, click done. The title will be shown the entire length of that clip. There is no way to adjust this. Keep in mind you can change the title design by selecting a different theme from settings. Once we are satisfied with our project, select my projects to get back to the marquee. From the marquee we can play back the project in full screen. We can even use AirPlay to watch it on an Apple TV, but it will need to process the video first. If we tap the action icon, we have a variety of options. In this case, I want to send my project to my camera roll. Because I'm using 720p video, I have the option to export in full HD, so let's choose that. The project will export, and you can now go to your camera roll to view the finalized movie. Now let's take a look at the final project.
Now with my Ford Touch, everything is color coordinated, and on the main screen are four quadrants. The four quadrants are phone, media, climate, and navigation. So if we go to media, you have your radio, Sirius, CD, USB, Bluetooth, AVN, and SD card. Now if you go to your phone, you can dial, go to your address book, phone book, call history, messaging, etc. Under climate, in the Lincoln, you have heated steering wheels as, long, as well as cooled seats and heated seats. And you can adjust your fan speed, uh, your, uh, your airflow, etc., etc. And, of course, you have dual climate so the passenger can adjust their seat as well. The Lincoln Center Stack also features all touch-sensitive capacitive controllers such as the sliders. Just run your finger along them and you can adjust the volume or fan speed. Now what appear to be buttons on the surface of the panel are actually touch sensitive nubs. They help you to find your selections and you receive an auditory beep to confirm you've made contact. Once again, this is Detroit Borg with a tutorial of iMovie for iPad 2. Thanks for watching.